Hey everybody, we are back. Hello. Back for another review. review. Yeah. Yes. Exciting stuff. This is groundbreaking because this is our first review of a documentary. Yes, it is. Or as the older folks call it, documentary. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep, and uh, and it's good because Gary loves documentaries. I do. I really and, do. I really do. And, yeah. I, I appreciate some. Some annoy me. And uh, I'm just always very excited when we can watch a documentary where they actually just state the facts and let you mm-hmm. decide what to think. And which is usually my issue with documentaries is they decide to take a side and tell you just mm-hmm. the one side and it drives me nuts. But the one we're talking yeah. about today did not do that. So that's good. It did not. And I just want to reiterate, I do lo- I love good documentaries. And a good documentary does the opposite of what you said. Yeah. There's a documentary problem in our society, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but today we are talking about Netflix's a Netflix production, mm-hmm. uh, a flicks, whatever they call it, the social dilemma. Yep. Not to be confused with the David Fincher movie, The Social Network. That's no, another, yeah. movie, another whole other movie. This is yes. the social dilemma. Yes, and this is, um, you know, I'm glad Netflix. Uh, I guess bought the rights to this, I guess, Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, and hadn't showed and stuff. And I think it's, I like it because, you know, you always want to learn more, but at the same Mm -hmm. time, I find it ironic that we're going to talk about this on a social media platform. Mm -hmm. So, so there's this. I was thinking that earlier while I was uh, walking around. I was like, that's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's ironic. Um, Yeah. Um, This is why when, when I saw the trailer for this, which you, you sent it to me, Mm-hmm. And I watched the trailer, and I was like, "I like where they're going with this." That's a scary looking poster, wow. isn't it? Though this is the Sundance yeah. poster that I found. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it looks. Like but Predator. when you watch a documentary, it makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Uh, it doesn't look like Predator. I guess that's what they're trying to do, right? Yeah, so, I guess so. Yeah. Um, but this uh, stuff like this is why I have a love hate relationship with Netflix because they put out some trash. You yes, know? They, they they really do. Um, but then they put out stuff like this where I'm just like, all right, this is why I'll keep you in my life mm-hmm. because, you know, you know, I don't want to, yeah. uh, there's so many people I've asked, Hey, have you watched this yet? No, I deleted it. And I was like, dang, well, you should watch this, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, well get back on the seven day trial just to watch this and then you can take yeah. it off again. Like, <laughs> Yeah. There you go. You yeah. Know, create a new email, you know, like we all do. Get yeah, I know. Right. Trial, you know? Yeah. John Smith, one, two, three at gmail.com <laughs> done. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But it's definitely worth the watch. Uh, I actually just recommended it to someone else today. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it's hard. It is hard because Netflix puts out so much trash, but mm-hmm. then they have this and, you know, and then of course they put the last dance on there. Another great documentary, mm-hmm. but, there you uh, go. yeah. but, uh, yeah. So well, we every, should that. how we should, but they have a lot of, you know, a couple of times they hit it out of the park and this is, mm-hmm. um, for me, definitely one of them. I'm glad that again they picked this up, so mm-hmm. we could see it. And I like again that they just they didn't just take the side of social media is completely horrible and bad and evil and all that kind of stuff. Like mm-hmm. they they I I like that they got actual people who worked, you know, and, and were not just like worked but like were high up, like CEOs, mm-hmm. presidents, vice presidents, uh, director mm-hmm. of creative, blah blah blah, you know, of Google of Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, so on and so forth on social media stuff. Um, and I like that they actually grabbed a lot of people into this to to just talk about it and why they, they felt that they needed to step down from their position to do mm-hmm. other things. And and I like that they were just stating the facts of how this whole thing works. And I thought that mm-hmm. was that was really good. Yeah, they got they got people on here that know the nuts and bolts of what goes on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times when you when people talk about social media in a negative light or a it's, – it's usually from people who don't or aren't, aren't even on it anyway, mm-hmm. um, you know. Um, but these are people that – the the route they took was, okay, this is something that is a part of our society. It's a part mm-hmm. of our lives. It's not going anywhere. So they're very realistic in that. They're like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just going get, to keep getting bigger. But let's take a step back and re- rethink how – one is being presented to us and two, how we are using it. And, 
you know, I, I came away from this like, wow, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, and it was just, I came away from it thinking there's a lot of things you, you think about that you, that might be going on, but to hear people from those backgrounds say those things was very eye opening. Yes. Yeah. And, and I also liked how they, and I know we're basically getting into like good stuff, but this is kind of how the review goes. But like, mm-hmm. but, but I did like that they even admitted that they were just trying to do the best that they could to make a platform, you know, Google, whatever it was, to make mm-hmm. a platform that people would enjoy, that would connect society, that would help people, you know, learn information, whatever. Like they actually had good intentions to begin with. But of course, like any company, you need to make money. Yeah. And so, you know, so so it started with good intentions. And then, of course, you have to make money. You have to pay the people that you have. But mm-hmm. then how that started turning into this pretty much like what you see in the poster here into this mm-hmm. like monster of social media and algorithms mm-hmm. and code that just essentially feed us exactly what we say, or at least we think we want. Mm-hmm. And then it just starts creating problems. So I like that mm-hmm. they at least said like, yeah, here's a problem we have. However... This is where it started. And it's not like, you know, this was started like these guys were evil and they wanted to control kids. You know, no, it wasn't that. It was, hey, here were our honest intentions and Mm -hmm. we were starting to look at stuff. But at the end of the day, the money is what won over. And that's why we are where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it started out as a tool, which it is. I mean, social media is a very useful tool. It connects Mm -hmm. people. We're using it right now. You know, Uh, Mondays for our live shows, we use my Facebook to stream. Uh, so others can watch. It is a, a great tool that we use. We use it in our jobs quite a bit, you know, um, but it does and it can easily get a grip on us if we're mm-hmm. not careful. And and they talked about that a lot. And what I really liked about this documentary, it wasn't just um, people looking at a camera and talking. They had a story going on behind the scenes, yes. you know, mm-hmm. to they had a, it was about a family and it showed how like, these this family couldn't even have dinner without mm-hmm. their phones. And and I think we've all been in that situation before. I've been there. You know, I've been in social settings where I've just been, you know, mm-hmm. you know it's, just, it's hard not to because yeah. we're so used to it. But this documentary was all about, okay, let's take a step back and just realize how can we take a break from this and, and, and rework it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and there was some very – I don't want to spoil anything, but there were some things in here that I, I came away from. And there was one part – where they were talking about how I don't want to get too far ahead of us. I don't want to spoil anything, but he mm-hmm. was talking about how they will social media will present in front of you what they think you want to see. Mm-hmm. And you will only see things from your perspective, like your point of view. Yep. And it will continue to do that. And if, if millions of people are only seeing that the divide in our country continues to do that, and when they talked about that with the state of what's going on in our world now, yeah. I got, I'll be honest, I got a little emotional. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't like admitting that, but I was just like, oh my gosh, yeah. because I've been that. I, that's happened to me. You know, yeah. I'll get on YouTube and I'll just see, oh yeah, this is the point of view. And it's just like, wow. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, that was pretty, uh, you know, intense. <laughs> yeah. But it just shows how like the way the system works you know, these, these algorithms, these computers, like, of course it leads to that. How else could it lead to that? Because they're just trying to feed you again. I won't get too far ahead, but like mm-hmm. they want to keep you connected. That's, that's the job yes. that mm-hmm. they have these computers. So they want to keep you connected. So that's what ends up happening. Um, mm-hmm. So, but yeah, but don't want to get too into the spoil too much. Cause I really no, think I people need to watch it themselves, but, mm-hmm. but it was, it was very eye opening. And, and on a funny side of eye opening, they did have on here, Gary, I want to see if you had the same thought. They did have on here the father of virtual reality, like the guy who like really started creating it mm-hmm. and pushing it. Yeah. When, when they showed him, I was like, that's exactly what I thought he would look like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he was the only one that was like, just don't use it. Go outside. Yeah. He was like, he was the only one that was, he was, you know, yeah. and uh, the like, father of virtual it. reality was yeah. like, just get rid of it all. <laughs> you know, yeah. but yeah. it was I funny. Did, uh, I was like, because when he came on screen, Megan and I were like, that's about right. <laughs> that's yeah. about right. We had the exact same thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Um, he seemed like a very interesting guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you, you can tell the man is brilliant. Oh, you know? yeah. Like you could tell by yeah. the way he was speaking and thinking. The man's brilliant. It was just funny. Mm-hmm. 
that like mm-hmm. the guy who invented virtual reality to get people even more like plugged in and less yeah. out of reality. The, yeah. the guy who essentially made Ready Player One happen. All right, like this I is know, yes, <laughs> yep. But and that's what he looks like, you know. It's interesting you say that because I that's what I thought of a lot while watching this was, yeah. was Ready Player One, which I have the book here actually. I got to get back to my brother-in-law, uh-huh. but um, and uh, it, it was very. I think these that movie, which is a, a you know, it's fiction with this. I think they kind of go hand in hand of the stories they're trying to tell. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, but yeah, I, I did think that was interesting. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> just don't use it, you know. Um, yeah. And yeah, and the whole connection to like the Matrix type stuff too. Yeah. Um, you know, how we can kind of be just plugged in and not realize how much control things can happen, have over mm-hmm. us. And um, so I, I do, I, I've recommended this to a lot of people, um, students, adults, um, family, mm-hmm. um, because I do think it's an important thing to see, you know. Yeah. If you if you're watching here today, thank you. But yeah, check it out definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. And like we said, you know, just continuing on this process of good, mm-hmm. like this isn't this isn't like a complete bash on social no. media. It truly is. I like it, like I said we've said before. I just like that. Here are the facts. Here's how these algorithms works. Here how we created it. Here's why we created it. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately, we've created a monster that we never knew that we were creating. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, um, and I like that they had a line in there. uh, Through mine and like my wife's research, we already kind of knew this, but like, Mm -hmm. I like that they even put in there at the end is like all these people who work in Silicon Valley, they don't allow their kids to have have phones or social media at all because they know how Mm -hmm. it works. And they know the addictive properties and all that kind of stuff and how we can formulate Mm -hmm. your mind and and so, like, I find it ironic that the people creating these things don't let their family have it. Like, yeah. it's very like, – that's also very telling to me um, mm-hmm. about these kinds of things. And it's, and it, you know, and it's just, like, the stuff that we had to talk about. And I like what they also brought in where they were talking about, um, you know, TV and movies and all this stuff is regulated on yeah. how you can go to kids, how you can go to adults, all this kind of stuff. But social mm-hmm. media found this loophole. Yeah. And it's not regulated. And then that's and that's what some of these guys are fighting for mm-hmm. is try to find some regulation on this so mm-hmm. we don't continue down the path that we're going. So I like that they also presented like real world, realistic yeah. solutions towards the mm-hmm. end. And there's more, but I like that they presented those things as well. Yeah. And that's what I came away from. I said, okay, social media reform, you know, yeah. kind of like how can we um, – it, it was very realistic in that. It wasn't like – because if you watch an was it two hours long? If you watch two hours documentary saying about an hour and a half, you know, I think something. Like yeah, that. If, you, if you if you watch it, and you're just like you know, don't use it, don't use it. Blah blah. It's like okay, we get it. And then and you, either you walk away rolling your eyes, or you walk away from. Well, I'm not going to use it. And then 30 minutes later, scrolling. Yeah. You know. But yeah. if if the way they portrayed it is like okay, I can establish some things in my life where this can be used as a tool, and it cannot be something just as overpowers because I do think our and we've had conversations before you and I and our wives and um, with the students and people around our office. It's like, our, I think our mental health is at stake here, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that is what they were focusing on uh, mm-hmm. most of the time, mostly over this documentary. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Cause it did touch on suicide rates and numbers mm-hmm. amongst kids, preteens, mm-hmm. all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff and how, you know, there's a lot of stuff they just touch on just yeah. again, presenting facts, not saying, yeah. Either or, but just here's one, what's happening. And how, you know, one comment on a picture that a teenager will post may not even be meant for bad can just completely ruin her entire day, yep. week, month, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so Gary, any, any bad things that stood out to you in this that you're like, eh, I don't know about that or anything like that? Well, um, Honestly, not really. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was paced really well as, as far as like a, as a documentary goes. I thought the visuals were great. Um, how they, We've already talked about how they went about it. It was really, really good. Um, you know, it's been a week since I've watched it, and nothing really comes to mind where I'm just like, you know, I just, I, I just thought the way they, they did this was, was very, very good. Mm-hmm. I just, there's not much bad I can really think of. Um, yeah. I think – there was a couple of times, maybe it got a little bit political, but it wasn't over the top with it at all. I mean, you kind of expect that with stuff like this, you know, mm-hmm. like you'll, you'll get the, 
know, there's a lady who just starts talking about climate change out of nowhere, you know? Right. Um, but I mean, yeah. that's a nitpick, not necessarily a bad thing. But. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. I think any bad would be nitpicks kind of things. It's mm -hmm. just stuff that is just like, okay. And when, when you nitpick, it's more personal preference than anything. Yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, like there was some political stuff, but you know, like for me, I had to like not worry about it because they also said political stuff on the other side. So mm -hmm. it was like, now me personally, I wish there was no political stuff, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't see how they could avoid it with this topic, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so it's just like, eh, and I mean, maybe some cheesiness in the story thing that they did, <laughs> yeah. but like I said, there's like, yeah. but like, there's a nitpick stuff. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. anything real mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, and, and then I guess just moving on to the pastor part of things. I mean, I think this is more of a, from the pastor's side, it's like, I feel like ministers, like we all should know, we all should see this and know what we're dealing with. Um, I think I told you, Gary, it's like, we should all know these things so we can understand the people that we are ministering to better, teens mm -hmm. in our case, churches, whatever, so we can understand what people's men, men, uh, mental state is. Yeah. And understand where they're coming from and why they have the struggles they have. Because sometimes we can sit back and be like, why are you struggling with this? Why are you still depressed? Why are you yeah. like you have a new job? You have all this. Why are you still mm -hmm. struggling this? But mm -hmm. after you see this, you see how people can still be have anxiety written, depressed, mm -hmm. stressed out because of what social media does. And it could have mm -hmm. and everything could be going great in their life. But this happens. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just good to to see and to know so we can yeah. better be equipped to help people. Yeah, I think you said at lunch last week when we were talking about it, you said you were going to recommend that we watch this as a staff. Mm -hmm. And and I could not agree more with that. I was telling our good buddy Dom the same thing because he watched it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think, yeah, church staffs, ministers, we should all be watching this for those reasons alone, knowing what people are going through, how, what, in some cases, as ministers, what we're kind of up against, you mm -hmm. know, um, because this is a tool for good, but also for bad. And, um, and yeah, is to, to see what people are dealing with and, and to see how, um, you know, it can be used to our advantage as well. You know, yeah. if you look at the algorithms, we're sharing stuff, you know, okay, how can we get what we're doing, um, within a church or youth ministry out in front of people as well, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So Cause yeah. if we understand algorithms and how they work, if we produce our content, from the church's mm -hmm. standpoint in a way mm -hmm. where it will pop up on their feeds and they're more getting mm -hmm. encouragement and their minds are getting filled with scripture and stuff like mm -hmm. that. We can start to change and help people mm -hmm. a lot more, but we have to understand how these algorithms work and <laughs> all this kind yeah. of stuff, what we need to do on our end to get them mm -hmm. more content. That's going to lead them back to Christ as mm -hmm. opposed to leading to whatever else nonsense that's bringing them down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think somehow we as a society have flipped and this is what Megan and I were talking about afterward. And, you know, um, my wife, you know, she's struggled with her mental health due to social media. Um, mm -hmm. and we're, you know, we're working on that as, in our marriage as well. And she talked, we talked about how we will see what we see online as reality. Yeah. And, um, somehow that what really goes on has, you know, it's just flipped. You know what what we see on social media is reality, and what really is going on in our life is is you know the opposite. And, yeah. Um, so I just wondering as as we as a society as individuals, maybe we can adjust that a little bit. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Because it is because like like we saw on there, like they feed you what they think they mm -hmm. want you to see, and so yeah, you're not getting reality. I mean, you could be even getting mm -hmm. information that's not true at all. You know, they mm -hmm. talked a lot about fake news and how because of the algorithms, it's easy to find fake mm -hmm. news, no matter what side you're on. Like, yep. so. I need my grandparents to watch this documentary so they'll stop sending me videos. <laughs> yes, I know, right? <laughs> Megan's grandmother, I love you, but please stop sending me videos every morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, I'll just leave so, that there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I think in the dad, I think it's a lot of the same lines as the pastor and stuff, kind of what mm -hmm. we've been talking about. It's just like, well, one, I think for me as a dad, I'm like, man, I'm really going to try to push back as far as possible, maybe at least mid high school mm -hmm. before my kids have phones and all this crap, yep. because you just see the numbers of what happens to teenagers. Mm -hmm. Their minds are still developing. They can't handle it. Yep. Um, so I know at least from, from learning experience, it's like, it's going to be a while before my kids get anything, but even just, this is the kind of stuff, these are, this is to me like a tool that parents need 
to understand. Because let's be real, us, you know, parents of the teenagers that we have, no one's lived through something like this before. No. We're trailblazers no. on this new technology, you know, road that's on here. Mm-hmm. Like this is, none of us know. So we need resources like this to know the truth so we can yeah. do a better job of parenting and raising our children. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was our takeaway as well. Um, Megan and I have always said that, you know, I didn't get a phone until I started driving. Mm-hmm. Um, but times were different then, didn't really need it then until then. Right. And, and that's something we really, you know, we say about our kids as well. Is like when they start driving, that's when we get a phone. Um, you know, like my daughter has a Kindle that she plays on and she has kids, uh, Netflix and Disney Plus on it. Mm-hmm. And we're always checking it, you know. And she only she's only has a, a, a certain amount of time she's allowed to use it. Right. Um, yeah. So it was even after watching, it was like, OK, we're on the right track. Let's continue to do that. You know, right. Um, you know, we, I went and got her Kindle and was just making sure it was like, OK, just, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just watching it and then using the, you know, that whole reform idea, retool idea, mm-hmm. you know, and being mindful and just being parents, you know, knowing yeah. what your kids are watching, what they're taking in. Yeah. Be involved. That's another thing that I saw with this and just other stuff. It's like parents, they just assume, oh, here's a phone. My kids are innocent. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. nothing's going to happen. But the way these things work, stuff pops up one click. Heck, you can have a conversation and the phone picks it up, you know, and stuff pops Mm -hmm. up on your Facebook, which is always creepy to me. Yeah. But, but, you know, but it's like you just can't be naive. Even if Mm -hmm. your kids are innocent, you can't be naive that nothing's going to come across their phone or their screen. And yeah. You know, so be just involved. yeah, be that's very cool. involved. Be very mm-hmm. involved and know what's happening. And that's something that, you know, that I thought this showed off showed very well. So, mm-hmm. all right. So you ready to rate this thing, Gary? Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. and and I don't know. Maybe those watching, uh, me personally, I I feel like I rate documentaries different than I do movies. I don't know about you, mm-hmm. Gary. Because for me, like yeah. a movie, you're trying to tell a story and mm-hmm. you know sell you this world and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and even like biographies or something like that. But like documentaries to me is like a different kind of animal when it comes to ratings. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just keep that in mind because you do have to look at it differently. It's not a normal movie, if that makes sense. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at it from that lens, you'll be, you won't, I don't think you'll grasp what they're trying to tell you, what they're trying to talk about. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about this today as far as what to rate it and on the documentary scale, I mean, with the information, the way we went about it, I just, I don't see how I, I mean, I got to go five, mm-hmm. you know, um, because of the importance of it, the subject matter, because um, you can have some, a documentary like with, uh, with an important subject matter, it can be done really, really poorly, you know, right. there's a lot of them out there, but um, yeah, I just, I, I see nothing, I have, I have no issues with this, so yeah, I'm going to go five. Yeah. And I'm not gonna keep it up there. That's where I am too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how critical I am of documentaries. Yeah, so for yeah. so for me to give this a five is actually mm-hmm. a huge deal. That is a huge deal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but but it is because I liked again. I just liked how they didn't take a side. They mm-hmm. got real people who worked in these environments who are currently working for social media reform, mm-hmm. and they said they just they just told the facts. They said here here were our humble beginnings. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. to make money, to provide all that kind of stuff, here's the steps we had to do. But we had no idea what was happening. Like, just mm-hmm. I just thought it was good that they just they did a documentary, just stating the facts, told the story of how this developed, and mm-hmm. uh, and again, like it, again, because that's my thing is like, don't take sides. Just show me the facts and let me decide. Yeah. And yep. I thought they did it well. I thought they presented it extremely well. Um, mm-hmm. I thought honestly, even like the little like you said, the story that that went along with mm-hmm. it, um, even just the the way they edited it and made it like. Mm-hmm kind of cinematic and stuff like I just thought it was really really well done I was you know I was very impressed and I was glad to to be able to actually watch this and not come away with it like you know how sometimes Christian movies do just hate everything like no it wasn't that so I was glad to see that too it was refreshing to me that this day and time we we get something like this that is very much a here are the facts make a decision Mm -hmm. because we I mean and they touch on it we, we don't get that these days in our media, in our news coverage, it is everything's biased. Everything is is got a um, an agenda, you yeah. know. And this some I I needed a documentary like this in my life. I was be honest, and mm-hmm. it was very refreshing. I went away from it like, okay, there there's 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 some hope out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's still yeah. people who know how to do documentaries too. Yes, Thank God. yeah, so. yeah. And and I'm hoping a lot of people watch it, and um, it'll uh, 
you know, help us get on the right track and how to, how to use this stuff the right way. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yep. So those were, those are our takeaways. Hey, you guys watching, let us know what you think. Leave yeah, a comment kind of. down below. We would love to hear from you. And mm -hmm. uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, turn on the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Uh, we mm -hmm. got some, you know, as always, we're always trying to think of new things and plan new things. And, and I yep. know we're moving in that direction. So don't forget to do all that. Yep. And we'll be back on Monday. And, uh, yep. you know, join us if you have time. You, you, can, you can join us live. Uh, grab mm -hmm. your lunch. Watch, watch along with us. And uh, comment. And uh, love to hear from you. Yep. Definitely would. So thank you guys for spending this time with us. Go check out The Social Dilemma. Yes. And uh, get yourself some good information. And, uh, again, let us know what you think. We'll yep. see you guys.